I've been thinking about how I do the points and all these distros that I review, and I wanted to come up with uh, some more standardizations on just how I give the points out. So you've seen the different tests that I do. I'll just show you quickly how I do the scoring. All these tests are weighted, so just for being easy to install, I could give it a maximum score of five points. Whereas having a lot of bugs could give a maximum score, well, 25, or even lose it a lot of points. So that reduces the distro's average quite considerably by having a lot of bugs. So out of all that, I get the unadjusted and the weighted scores. So the unadjusted ones would be just the average out of the five points there you could see on the score. The weighted ones would be out of my scoring. So you see there that Fedora actually gained 1%. And I actually just kind of round up or round down the number there. Because I don't want to say, well, Fedora 18 has got 77.19. No, I don't say that. I, that just sounds too geeky, really. Let's just say it averages 78, or it averages 75, or it averages 80. You know, it's going to be those sort of numbers. But the point I wanted to come on to, right, I've given a set of uh, standards for all these different scores. So for easy to use, so you've got the point of only one out of five be only the system programmer knows how to use the, that distro. We got to the point of requires hours of manual reading, requires some manual reading, a small bit of thinking involved, and just the basics where you know how to switch the computer on. If you're that basic, you know how to use it then. So hours of manual reading would be something like uh, Gentoo or Arch, some manual reading, Debian or Fedora, small bit and to the point of, you know, how to switch computer on, Zorin or Mint. Ease of installation, I love that one. Computer was lobbed out the window, much frustration there, and kind of gave up. Or to, the keyboard was destroyed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or text only, or a lot of technical questions. GUI base with some technical questions, or simple point and click. The styling. Now there's some debate here, I've seen a lot of my distros that I reviewed that uh, I say something's good and uh, someone else might have a completely different opinion here. I know we all think differently and that's just part of the variety of life. But what I wanted to, what I wanted to clarify it down to for when I'm reviewing them, a complete mess with a lot of errors would be say the menu bars were disjointed, uh, got some errors, maybe like the colouring was different on the menu bar there to the application background. Now the basic desktop theme, what I've wanted to do is award distros that go over and above just providing the standard GNOME or KDE desktop. So I know KDE is quite a nice desktop, but if a distro has only used the basic KDE, then I don't want to give them too high points compared to a distro that's gone and created their own themes for instance. So something that's glossy and stunning, maybe that just someone's used the Fainzer icon set, or like you got the colourful close, minimise, maximise buttons there, and the colourful icons in Ubuntu. That's quite nice. An absolutely stunning E17 desktop, Bodhi Linux, those sort of things. I think they're really nice. I think the developers there have put a massive amount of effort in making their distros look quite pretty, and that's why I've gone for absolutely stunning there. Right, boot up speed. <laughs> I might need to clarify the timings here slightly, but this is what I'm basically on in VirtualBox. And then I know what adding a few seconds would be for my system. I know if you've got really slow hardware, then you're kind of going to be beyond the 30 seconds anyway. But anyway, tying it down to, well, window speed <laughs> or erosion pace could be the other term there. Uh, 20 to 30 seconds, 11 to 15, 6 to 10, or one out of five would be below five seconds. So maybe something like uh, Gentoo or Arch would be there, and Ubuntu would probably be around the six to 10 seconds. Responsiveness. So I'm looking at responsiveness of the average program, like File Manager, uh, Firefox, Chrome, just those little basic applications. Not going too far as to reviewing, say, game opening time, no, because games are all different. Just the average application. So gave up and went for a beer. In other words, it didn't happen. Never opened. Might need to think about the timing slightly again, but uh, we got um, like Windows pace there, five to ten seconds, four or five, or maybe 
Windows 7 might fit, get that one close. Average Linux distribution is going to be around there, two or three seconds. Maybe Gentoo or Arch should be there. Well, one Ubuntu based distro I've seen is Elementary OS. That's opened before I click the button, or opened as I click the button, I think is the term. I was just kind of making fun of it there. Right, number of bugs. <laughs> Must be a pre alpha release. Although, well, fair play that some pre alpha releases uh, can be alright. One or more major bugs. So, thinking of the Mint 14 Ubuntu 12.10, major issue in that some application has crashed before they saved the data or just didn't save the document. Major failing there. A few or more minor bugs with the OS. Some little glitch here and there. You, know, you might notice it, but it doesn't really affect the OS, doesn't affect the day to day running. Now, I can't grade running on certain hardware because people could say, oh, that's a bug, it doesn't work on my hardware. No, I can't test every hardware, but I know what mine is. Mine's a fairly average system. I know all the hardware is Linux compatible. So I can only base it on what I've got. Now, if there's major issues in VirtualBox, I kind of know that, and then I will do a full system install. There are certain distros I know that just will not work in VirtualBox. And I know to test those on the full system, but for some people saying, oh, glitch is VirtualBox related. No, because I do, I've seen enough now, I know kind of what are and aren't VirtualBox issues. Right, minor bugs in a couple of applications. Maybe the developer's chosen some applications that do have slight issues. Yeah, just off, my, off the top of my head there, one I thought of was uh, the Fedora, the video player didn't work that well. Totem just crashed, or not crashed, uh, it just showed a little glitch there. That's kind of what I'm showing. There were bugs found, but it really didn't affect the overall use of it, and then it got to none found during testing. Selection of pre-installed applications. Now here's where I grade the distro kind of based on what it says it's providing. Now, if I looked at a gaming distro that only came with Solitaire and LibreOffice, then, well, that's no good at all, that's going to be completely useless. But if I looked at a business distro that had Solitaire and LibreOffice, then that's going to be absolutely fine. It would probably score 4 or 5 out of 5. That's kind of what I'm looking at here. So, got a different grading there, nowhere near advertised specification. Missing a few or has too many applications. Yes, too many can be a bad thing for a distro. Wasting space, wasting resources, difficult to get rid of some config files. The codec's not installed. That's going to be a disadvantage then, because it's not really an out-of-the-box system. A new user then has to do something to make the codex installed. Installed. So kind of all the Ubuntu distros around there, Ubuntu, Kubuntu, etc. And spot on, well, had everything it need everything working out of the box and pretty much what I thought the distro needed. Number of applications available in the default repositories. And here's the key, the default repositories. I know you can add loads of repositories to a distro, but I'm looking at default, what it comes with. So none available would be like, well, Windows 7, Windows XP. They don't have any repositories. And you can get those applications, but that's a different matter. Uh, I might have to think about the numbers slightly here. So less than 20,000 or no codecs or less than 30,000. So a distro like Fedora or Debian, no codecs available in the default repositories. It's not going to score that well there. Some games, codecs or a few multimedia applications. Again, probably looking at more, say, the Ubuntu or Mint around that point. But for some distros that have gone really over and above and added a lot of repositories, or say from Launchpad, then they're going to score quite well there. So lots of games and multimedia applications. There's one multimedia application I look for in particular there, is Handbrake. That is so rare that I find that one. <laughs> so there's just one easy one to judge there. And for the 32 and 64 bit versions, only one, three, and five points available for there. That one would be 32 bit non PAE, so that's going to be very restrictive on the number of systems it can well, run on. And you wouldn't. And then 32 bit PAE is that it's only 32 bit, but it's got fully addressable memory, so more than what, 3 gig of RAM addressable. 
and lastly got 32 and 64 bit. So that is my thinking on standardising these test points that I do. But if you've got any suggestions, your comments about it, you know, please let me know. Um, this is all a work in progress. Uh, my way is not the right way necessarily, but I've got to do what I think is the right way and what I think is applicable for many users. And I'm aiming it more for what a new user thinks, not what an advanced user thinks, because I know advanced users, you, you know how to get repositories installed, you know how to get codecs there, and you know how to do that. Would a new user? Not necessarily, and that's what I'm making this for. But yeah, thanks for watching, see you later.